What I'm hoping to show you today is sarsaparilla. What a sarsaparilla plant looks like. And I'm trying to find a good plant to represent it. And I have to excuse this mess here. Um, work in progress. Rock collection in progress. And all this is sar... I call it sarsaparilla, but it's sarsaparilla. And I'm just going to pull up one real quick to show you. Well, maybe I can show you more than that here. I'm just going to break this off right here. Save that plant for another day. So. And you can see this whole area is all covered with them. And what I find amazing, this plant, and why it took me so long to, to actually believe that this is a saparilla plant, is because one, this right here, one stalk into three divisions. And it's really a quite perfectly balanced pyramid if you tip it upside down quite a flat floor and I noticed that this joint right here is somewhat purple as is this little nodule right here that's always the same color but if you look at each one of these leaflets and look at them all through here I'm just loaded with them if you look at these leaflets let's take this one here they have five sets of leaves three on the top then two on the bottom. But notice how this is shaped. Look how short and stubby and round that one is. Totally different from the rest of the leaves. So I turn it around. Again, there's five leaves. These top three are smaller than the two bottom ones, but look at the shape of the bottom ones. They're pretty much the same. I rotate it again. And here we have three larger leaves. Uh, well, this one's larger too, I guess. But look at that round leaf one right there. And if I put these together, let's pretend that one doesn't exist. And look, these are the opposites. They all have five leaves, but on this one, the round leaf is off to the side here on the left-hand side. And on this one, the small round leaf is on the right-hand side. So you take these different little clues here and... It took me quite a while to, to tell myself, okay, this is actually the plant. Because everything I've seen online, as far as pictures go, the leaves look like this. They didn't show you the leaves that look like this. Or the other set of leaves that look like that. So I was very confused. And finally I just said, the hell with it. And I dug up a root. I claimed that this was going to be the plant. And I hoped that I was right. So I dug up the root. And I took a bite, and I started chewing it. And it's sweet. Not real sweet, but there's definitely sweetness to it. But notice that this is purplish. Each joint around the leaves are a little purple. But this right here is, was, is a telltale sign for me. Not just the leaves, which are seems to be misleading unless you really know the plant. But you have this purple nodule, then under that you have what looks like an inchworm, all squished up, a lot of lines. It's like you took a, I don't know, you took a string and just kind of squished it, coordinated it together. And you have these, I'll try to get closer. You have these lines, see how squished up that looks? And then at the bottom of that squish, it goes off to the side and that's your rhizome. It goes under the soil a couple, three inches, and it goes out. And these can be several feet long, but you have to have good soil in order to, to dig up what you want. Sometimes I get this much. Sometimes I get, I get my longest one, I think, was six feet. You can make wine out of these roots. And yeah, people will use it for medicinal values, but I have no interest in that. And um, what I'm going to do is probably, I have a bunch of these drying, and I'm going to grind them up and make a tea out of them for this fall. So I'm going to keep these. I'll break these off here. And these are easy to break off. Look at that. There's one thing I wanted to mention as well about the saparilla is that this plant right there by itself. But um, the root where it's sweet, I said it can be made, used to make tea, make wine out of it, make tea out of it. And you can actually make a soda drink out of it, like a cream soda. And it can be used as a substitute for um, 
root beer. If you want to make a root beer type soda or drink. The flavor is going to be a little different, but it's a really good substitute.